Hello all, dear friends and colleagues from around the world. Firstly, I would like to thank Alex Ruthman and the NYU Shanghai program for this invitation and for offering me the chance to participate in this wonderful series of meetups that are so topically organized, and particularly this first online webinar of the series. Um, dear friends and colleagues, we find ourselves in unprecedented circumstances. Our societies, our lives are forever changed in ways we cannot even fathom at this point in history. No doubt world history will from now on be divided into the period before and after this pandemic. The opportunities for global and instant communication offered to us by digital technologies are no doubt the key to operate, manage, and eventually overcome difficulties and obstacles. And I am grateful for what we have in our armor and I welcome every opportunity to learn more. I will very briefly describe the situation currently in Greek education and will focus on difficulties and challenges, some of which are specific to my country, but also opportunities that emerge for future development. Our educational institutions, schools and universities have shut down on March 11th. Currently, the latest date given for their opening is May 10th, but it is expected to be extended further. Primary and secondary education in Greece is the responsibility of the state and therefore the Ministry of Education has been working non-stop to provide the necessary tools so that lessons can continue online. There are platforms available and all teachers and pupils are uh, provided with their own account to register and participate in various approaches and applications uh, available on those platforms for asynchronous and synchronous teaching. However, all those resources were used by a very small percentage of teachers, mainly IT specialists or uh, those with an interest in using digital technologies in their teaching. And even that percentage used them as an alternative approach, auxiliary to their main classroom lessons. It is not surprising then that the system could not support the surge of use by hundreds of thousands of teachers and pupils trying to access those tools during the working hours of the day. In the first at least couple of weeks, uh, teachers found themselves staying up all night in order to be able to upload work and assessments organized in electronic classrooms when the system was less busy, usually between 3 to 5 a.m. Now things are slowly uh, finding a pace. Secondary education is already working in both asynchronous and synchronous ways particularly upper secondary and pupils expected to prepare for their university entrance exams. Primary education has so far been working mainly in asynchronous ways and they will begin synchronous teaching shortly when our um, Orthodox Easter vacations will end on the 27th of April. Of course, as you can understand, this is a gross, this gross description of the situation. There are private schools that have started teaching fully in both synchronous and asynchronous ways from the very first week of quarantine. There are teachers that have never moved to synchronous teaching. There are pupils that have no internet access or have never signed into their electronic classroom. And also secondary subjects like the arts are offered in a smaller percentage, smaller percentage of schools and mainly asynchronous. This short overview of the situation in schools is pertinent to the music teacher education module uh, of our syllabus, which is the focus of today's presentation. Students in our department follow a five-year course in music studies with the option to specialize in musicology, ethnomusicology, Byzantine musicology and music technology. As part of their course, in order to acquire their pedagogical accreditation, they need to complete a module of eight subjects that relate to music education and music pedagogy. Teaching practice is included with uh, two semesters spent in combination of university-based and school-based observations, teacher shadowing, practice teaching, reflection, and so on. They are obliged to fulfill hours in primary schools, secondary schools, and secondary music schools. 
At the start of the quarantine, our students were in various levels of completion of their obligation for this part of their module. Our first question was therefore, whether we should <coughs> cancel the semester altogether. After discussions, we have decided to restructure the goals, assignments and assessment in order to adopt, adapt, adjust. However, our concerns and skepticism are valid and still alive, and we keep debating the issues because there are pros and cons in all scenarios. The difficulties faced, firstly, relate to the mandatory teaching and observation. As students are in various levels of completion, there are uh, the main issue we faced here was how to equate classroom observation and classroom teaching with online synchronous and asynchronous approaches. What could count as observation? What could count as teaching practice? And what about reflection and pedagogical skills? Another important group of difficulties that we faced relate to technology. Students access to hardware and fast internet, their skills and familiarity with the use of various applications and platforms, and of course the cost of some of the services provided by various companies that specialize in online teaching, presentation tools and platforms. As the quarantine was imposed in an urgent way, students had to leave their university accommodation and their flats. Not all have access and or hardware in their family homes, villages and home cities. The phones that they have and they use, most of them are very limited in accessing the material and completing assignments, as you can understand. In addition, not all students have the same skills using digital technologies and applications used in online teaching. There are very different levels of familiarity with digital tools and actually uh, also different uh, mentalities toward those. Lastly, each institution had to make arrangements and cover the cost of services and platforms for, so that all of us, students and staff, could work and operate. And another important aspect of that relates to the accessibility issue of students, for students with disabilities. Nevertheless, there have been a number of opportunities that emerged, uh, like the opportunity to acquire new skills, learn to use new applications, explore what digital technology can offer, the opportunity also to collaborate and work together, teach each other, create supportive communities, share resources and share ideas. And of course, uh, the opportunity and, uh, to realize the importance of open access material information and applications. I have mentioned earlier that there are a number of concerns related to our teacher education and teacher accreditation that have been raised through these, this transference to online only teaching environment. What type of skills are acquired and how do these compare with the pedagogical needs and skills that are included in our syllabus that are needed for future teachers? Are there maybe also important skills that would not have been acquired under normal circumstances? And what are those and how important are they? What has this experience taught us? Is there a need to redesign our teacher preparation courses? Are we preparing our students for the future? And what if the future is now? How prepared are they? How should we reconstruct our thinking for teaching online only each educational level? For example, what are the primary education specific issues that need to be addressed and how can we resolve them? Or what are the music performance specific issues that we are struggling with and how we, can we resolve those? This state of global emergency that we found ourselves in has so far presented us with a large list of difficulties. Through this crisis though, it is important to highlight the lessons that we have learned so far and the opportunities for the future that even at this early point are evident. Personal and professional development is happening around the globe. Each one of us is working with our own selves, adjusting our expectations, adapting to new circumstances, exploring our strengths. We are learning something new every day. 
acquire new skills, develop and expand our thinking. Communities of practice, communities of, for support, professional communities, have emerged as a natural response to this crisis. And it became evident that they can work in both physical settings as well as online settings. Digital technology is a powerful tool for the creation, continuance, and sustainability of such communities. And the quarantine situations that we found ourselves in, it is the only way. Each person is important. Different people have different needs. Flexibility, adjustability, and humane response are important if we want to be able to nurture healthy societies. For all education, all programs, levels, and systems, this is the ultimate goal. I would like to end this short presentation with an optimistic and positive note. I choose to highlight the importance of Ubuntu, the essential human virtues that have emerged throughout and because of this crisis. The importance of communities, of teams and cooperation, of empathy, solidarity, basic humanity, of understanding and acceptance. Because to cite one of our great Nobel Prize poets, Odysseus Elitis, if you can't find spring, create it. Thank you very much for your attention.